Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is another giant 3D printed project. If you haven't checked out my giant Lego electric skateboard build, then be sure to check that out on my channel. But this time we're actually going for a world record attempt of the largest 3D printed sculpture of a human. Now at the time of recording this video, the record is 3.05 meters, and we're gonna try and beat that by a fair amount. Now that's quite a big build, so this video is sponsored firstly by Lolzbot, who've provided two more printers, the Taz 6 with the Moore Struder with its 1.2mm nozzle. Check out my channel for a preview video uh, testing that extruder. The filament is sponsored by 3D Filler Print, and the video is also supported by the CCI faculty at Portsmouth University. All right, so we're gonna print a giant version of me. It's gonna hopefully be over four meters tall, provided no one beats me to the record in the meantime. So that means, first of all, I've got to scan myself into a computer. Right, so I'm here with Ted and Ken down at Portsmouth Uni and we're gonna 3D scan me and we're gonna be using something that looks very much like an iPad. So what have we got here? So this is, uh, this is called Cubify iSense, which is a handheld 3D scanner. So that's using an iPad and uh, it's got some software that runs and scans in real time. So Ken is going to be using this for his degree portfolio and he's currently doing some cleanup on the model. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, cheers dude. And what's the software you're using here? So this is a uh, ZBrush. Okay. And essentially it's a sculpting package. Where I took your pretty scans from the Cubify iSense and uh, essentially just cleaned it up. Made it look a little bit like you. <laughs> and uh, we can uh, export this in SEL file so we can begin 3D printing it. Wow, looks pretty amazing so far. Thank you. So Ken has finished his cleanup, and now I've got um, a giant 3D mesh of me, which um, looks pretty good, I think. He's done a bit of styling by looking at my YouTube videos, so my hair's a bit longer than it actually was when I was scanned. But on the whole, it definitely looks like a human. So now I need to cut this up, and we can start printing it all in lots of little pieces. Right, we've got two Taz 6s from Lolzbot, both with the more Struder fitted which should make the printing a lot quicker with its 1.2mm nozzle. I've also got some extremely large rolls of PLA, sponsored by 3D Filler Print, so this is the premium PLA. As well as the 2.3kg rolls, I've got a load of 1kg rolls here, and even more 1kg rolls here, so I've got about 30kg in total, which judging by the weight of it, hopefully should be enough, or I won't be able to move or lift the thing once it's done. So, I've started to cut myself up in Fusion 360 in mesh mode using the plane cut functionality, and that actually fills in the sides with flat sides, so I actually end up with solid pieces. So I've created all of these uh, planes here to try and cut myself up. I did start with one foot, but I thought really I should start at the top, see how heavy the prints turn out, and then I'll know how strong to make the legs so that uh, everything doesn't collapse. Obviously this is going to be quite big, and the parts are going to end up quite heavy. So, I've uh, basically cut myself up into four there. Conveniently, the four quarters of my head fit on the print bed, and we can see, if we go and take away that, that we've actually uh, cut it now, and we've filled in those planes so that we've actually got um, an STL, which we can export, and that's got all the sides on. Here's the passing cura, and you can see the estimate here is just 3 hours 10 minutes for that quarter of my head, and only 304 grams. And what I've actually done is selected to do a spiral vase, so it will do a solid bottom, and then it will do a single contour all the way up, uh, without stopping slowly raising until it gets to the top. And that's why the part is so light, but it should also be pretty rigid, and the layer bonding should be pretty good in the PLA. Here are the first two prints coming off. We're about an hour and 25 or so into each of those prints. So just under halfway, and it's looking pretty good so far. This is obviously the left side of my head, and it's just doing my eye there, and there's the top of my nose. Yep, that's the other side. We're still going, but we're only two hours and 15 into the prints. And obviously we've got two printers at once, so it would be over four hours otherwise. So we're doing fairly well so far. So those first two prints are finished, and now we're gonna just get those off the bed. There we go, looks pretty good. Super. I'm printing the two parts that go on the back of those, so the back of the heads, and those are about four hour prints, and we're about two and a half hours in on them. 
I'm printing a load of L-shaped brackets and those are going to be used to attach the open top of one layer onto the flat bottom of the next one. So here are the prints that I've done already, the four prints. I've already stuck the two front ones together and I stuck the back ones together. They've married up pretty well. There is some bulge in these on the very flat walls, so sticking the front and back together is going to be a bit of a challenge. We'll have to uh, sort of pop it together, but it seems to line up pretty well. Obviously we've got seam lines, but there's not really any choice there. And the glue I'm using to stick it together is Trade Strength Super Glue and also Super Glue Accelerator or Activator. And this is an aerosol where you spray onto it and it makes it go off in about 10 seconds. So it makes it much easier to stick the parts together. I don't have to hold them for too long. So I've glued in some of my L-shaped brackets I made all the way around. So we've got something to stick the next surface onto because otherwise we'd only have the very thin middle supports here. So uh, with hindsight, I think I would have left a big square in the middle that would have made it easier to push the pieces together instead of having all those corners coming together, but we can do that in subsequent layers. So I printed the top of the head as well. I split it in half down the middle and printed those two halves again in uh, spiral vase mode and stuck them on the top. So uh, basically we've got my entire head there, which um, there's some seam lines, but it's not looking too bad. But I wanted to discuss some defects and what I'm gonna do for future prints. So I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but there's actually a massive hole here I can put my finger in and uh, quite a lot of defects in the print there. And that's because the spiral vase basically only does one um, perimeter for each layer. So it doesn't, it's not able to fill in the sharp details. So that's um, gonna have been almost a horizontal piece, but it's just had to skip to the next layer. So it's left some holes there. Similarly, the top of my ears have done exactly the same thing there. And also, even though it's not that noticeable, you can see it a bit in the overhang on the eyebrows there. So I'm actually gonna leave this as it is and not reprint it for now, but we do wanna make something a bit better quality. So let's look at those Cura options. The next piece I need to print is the bottom of my face. So we're just gonna carry on down the model and see if we can get some better print quality. We'll return to the top of the head if it works out. So what I've decided to do instead of spiral vase mode is just a normal print, which is basically pretty much hollow. So that will mean that it can actually fill in those details. And if we look on the layer view, we can see that um, the overhang there of the chin is gonna have some uh, infill in it and the nose there as well. It's actually got yellow sort of infill on those layers. So it's gonna basically do uh, more than one perimeter and kind of do multiple passes on those horizontal surfaces, hopefully, so that we actually get something that's all fitted together. And I'm doing that by just putting the same settings in. So I've gone for a slightly, slightly lower layer height at 0.6 mil instead of 0.8, a shelf thickness of 1.2, which is one extrusion, a bottom top thickness of two layers. Um, I have put some infill in there, which will hopefully help tie the part together, but it's only 4% and uh, basically pretty much everything else is the same. So that's gonna take slightly longer. My prints were taking about three hours. This is nearly five hours. This one is smaller than the others. The others are about 350 grams. This one's actually lighter. If it were the other parts of the head, it'd probably be 450, something like that. So it's marginally heavier, but we should get a more structurally sound, better quality 3D print. So here is one of those prints. You can see it's doing that very uh, sparse infill there, but it's obviously tying the walls together. So hopefully they won't bulge out as much as, much as they did before. This is feeling a lot more solid and you can see it's done the nose perfectly well. There is a tiny hole right in my nostril, but I'm kind of okay with that because that's how it is in real life. And here they are. So these have come out uh, much better than the previous prints. All of these sides are perfectly flat because of the infill, so there's no bulging. Uh, the top and bottom surfaces there are fine. The chin's come out okay. There's a few 3D printing artifacts, but it is 3D printed. And that top surface, even though it's printed on virtually nothing, is great. So I've now got something to glue to, so I don't need my L-shaped brackets. So this is the back of the head printed in exactly the same way, but I've left this hole in the middle here because it's basically completely unnecessary. So uh, this is the back of the piece, but it's upside down that goes on here. So again, those top surfaces are printed fine uh, on practically no infill. So uh, pretty happy with that and I'm really happy with the print quality. So there's the whole head so far, which is twice as big as my head. Obviously, I much prefer the print quality of the lower part. So I'm actually going to go back now and reprint the top parts. So it shouldn't take too long. But um, yeah, pretty happy with that. And I'm pretty happy with the scale of it. So here come the two sides of my head in better quality with that 4% infill. So 
So I've reprinted the entire top of the head in that uh, single wall and 4% instead of the spiral vase. So obviously we've lost all the gaps and all of the things because the top is now on there. So all of these parts are really stable. It weighs just over four kilograms. It's a fairly big chunk of plastic. The shoulders are gonna have to be the same density, but after that we can work down and do much less dense parts, mainly because of all these features and things and the overhangs, the body is pretty much straight down. So hopefully we can save the weight there. But I'm really happy with that print quality. It looks pretty good and it's definitely me. So now we're down to the shoulders. That's cut into eight pieces and those will have to be the same infill density and the same quality prints uh, because of all the details and the overhangs and so on the top surfaces. Once we work our way down to the body, we'll cut the arms off and do those separately. But the rest of the body is pretty much just a tall tower all the way down to the legs. So uh, we can reduce the infill density there because there's not too many tricky details. Here are two of those eight parts of my shoulders being printed. And again, those are 4% infill with a single wall, but it looks like the overhangs and everything there is coming out quite well. So I'm really happy with that print quality. So it looks like I've printed opposites. So that's the other side of my neck. So my first four shoulder sections are done. I've just got to do the outsides there and we can think about moving on to the next layer. Here come two of those shoulder pieces. There are of course four in total for the two shoulders and front and back. Here comes the last piece of my shoulders. So that's the last two parts of that layer. And that's also the end of episode one. So don't forget to check back next time to see what happens with the rest of the body and how heavy it turns out. And also don't forget that the filament is sponsored by 3D Filler Print and the printers are sponsored by Lulzbot. All right, that's all for now.